What's up my brothers and my sisters from another mister. So today we're going to do a full story comic book review of The Violator, issues number one through three. This is where chaos is unleashed and it's The Violator's battle for survival with his brothers. Vindicator, Vandalizer, Vaporizer, and The Facilitator. Before we begin, I gotta go into a little background first. The Violator once had immortality. He most likely betrayed his family of demons in hell and now they loathe him. They want him gone. They desire to harm him. The Violator is a powerful demon from hell with diverse abilities. Superhuman strength and durability, longevity, just to name a couple. His capacity for shape-shifting which enables him to switch between the appearances of a human creepy clown form and a demon at command is one of his most renowned powers. Because of his ability to blend in with human culture and surprise his targets, he is particularly a very dangerous foe. Despite his powerful abilities, the Violet is renowned for his severe selfishness and readiness to betray anyone to further his objectives. He is an arrogant little son of a bitch and nasty being that enjoys the pain of others and is prepared to go to tremendous lengths to further his objectives. He's nasty like that. The Violator is one of history's most formidable and dangerous villains and his cruelty makes him a force to be feared. Anyone who faces him must be ready to deal with a formidable foe who will do whatever it takes to succeed. Violator believes that true devils like himself are superior beings and view death, cruelty, and other types of depravity as forms of amusement. He holds humanity in disdain. Now here we go into issue number one. The comic's first panel shows the Violator being viewed by his family or brethren in the pits of hell by a blood pool of some sort. Once immortal and strong, the Violator has lost some of his powers and is weak. This has to do with Spawn beginning story arc which we did cover in this channel, issues number 1 through 5. In short, Malboja punishes the Violator for going off script which throws Malboja's plans off script in turmoil. You can check that out after this video for more context, I'll put the link in description and also the playlist at the end of this video. Despite all this, his family feeds the Oracle with human life to keep watching him. The Oracle is unaware of this, though they only think they speak from hell or you know some crazy stuff like that. As the narrative progresses, we observe the effects of this feeding on the human victims. They suffer, pass away, and the Oracle devours their souls. As this continues, the Violator's brothers are still watching him and becoming more attracted by his frail condition. As the comic progresses, the Violator struggles to regain his strength and power while his family becomes increasingly obsessed with his downfall. The Oracle 2 becomes more and more powerful as it consumes more and more human life. The comic as a whole tells a menacing and riveting story about power, passion, and sacrifice. It examines the extent to which some people will go to preserve their supremacy and the toll this can have on those around them. On Earth, a gangster or mafia thug in a suit ties up the Violator. Mr. Twistelli is the name of the head. His men escorts the clown to the dock so they can drown him. This has to do with what the Violator did in the Spawn beginning story or like I mentioned. It all started with issue number 2 of Spawn where he went on the killing spree with the mob. And it was pretty brutal how he did that too. But the Violator successfully drags one of the Mafia bros into the water by picking up one of his Mafia guys ties with his teeth before getting tossed into the water. Remember what I tell you, you gotta wash this sly guy. In the water with this Mafia bro, the clown takes his gun from him then shoots the man through the skull with his own gun talk about an embarrassing way to go out like that bruh up top the men search the coastline in the dark to see if tommy the mafia bro that was thrown in had freed himself in the struggle they hear a small voice claiming to be tommy the henchman asks if he's okay and he says he has a headache the clown violet reveals he shoved his hand and gun through the back of tommy's skull and starts wasting the henchman I mean, Violet is sticking the gun through dead Mafia bro's mouth to the end to the other uh, to the other Mafia's brothers is true to form to his character and it's just savagery at its best. The clown's brothers were observing his deeds with the oracles the entire time. The Flibiac brothers argue as to whether they should help Violator since he's disgraced their name. So they kill an innocent victim of hell to spill more blood into their pool to improve their vision as to what's happening down, down on earth. In this panel, Twist has Alberto usher in a new bodyguard, 
A strong looking army man named the Admonisher is employed by Mr. Twist Deli, head of the mafia. To assassinate the violator, the Admonisher is not endowed with superpowers, he's just endowed with will and some cray cray. He has demonstrated his proficiency with his guns. To twist surprise to show that he is a master with his weapons. He shows he's the man for the job and now he can begin his hunt. Like the Violator, that clown's ass is his. The Violator is in plain view in the mall, hunting for a hacksaw to remove the head of the mafia bro that has stuck on his arm. As gory as it is, <laughs> this is kind of funny, but suddenly the Amonisher emerges and challenges the Violator. People at the mall start to fear and flee as the fighting begins. Clown can't clown around out of his way out of this. You gotta stick up for yourself, bro. Brick up! Not brick up, but stick up for yourself. Clown knows and recognizes that this guy is a pro. The clown becomes slightly worried as he's now mortal and could die. Clown tries to escape and runs away because he is no longer powerful or immortal. The Amonisher continues his mission while an oracle in hell keeps tabs on the situation. The Flibiac brothers understand that if this human wastes this clown, a Flibiac? Yo man, their reputation is ruined so they decide to end the Violator's life themselves. The other Flibiac brothers believes Clown will come out victorious, so using a human to decide heads or tails, they rip him apart to make the decision. Heads came out a winner. As the Admonisher arrived to confront him, the police were en route to the mall to also arrest him. Good luck with that stuff, bruh. Because his devil brothers performed a ceremony to send him to the mall to kill the Violator. The public appearing mall shifts into hell, changing the scene. This is very trippy, but very cool to look at at the same time. Suddenly, the mall has growth of vines, warts, and demonic manifestations. The Violator encounters his devil family. They appear to save their brother's life in order to preserve their name. Or did they? We shall find out some more. So as we go into issue number two, this is the family, the five illustrious Flibiac brothers. They are demons from hell. So the Violator acquires all memories following the confrontation with his demon brothers. Oddly, he doesn't appear surprised by it. He quips that the Violator is dishonoring the four famous Flibiac brothers, meaning excluding Violator being the fifth, and he confirms that with them just to make sure that they accidentally miscounted or that they did not accidentally miscount it. But no, this is not well received by the Demon Brothers who start toying with him while beating him up at the same time. The brothers didn't want their names tarnished with the human killing him, so they're gonna kill him himself. Sorry, Violator, this is the way brotherly love goes. And man, do they want to go to work on him and mock him brutally. The brothers eventually grow weary of playing and opt to deal with them later. Uncertainty surrounds the Violator's future, but it is reasonable to assume that he has found a formidable foe in the Demon Brothers. Given his casual attitude towards the entire incident, it is unlikely that he will be able to avoid their fury. Nah, bro, your ass is on their plate. Sorry, man, dinner is served. Vandalizer has vindicated create a hemisphere of necrorious containment around them to keep the humans from interfering with their plans while they're dealing with the clown. The dome is a remarkable engineering achievement and a symbol of the brother's strength and might. They have built a circle-shaped dome inside the dome that encircles the busy market. Their energy dome is awe-inspiring in size and scale and hums with otherworldly powers. Although the dome's function is unknown aside from, you know, keeping the humans from interfering, it is evident that the brothers value it in some kind of way. So the Admonisher confronts and combats the Flibiac brothers and asks which one is Roosevelt, a reference to Twist Directions or from earlier. He surprises everyone by having fun fighting them off, though he's having fun. The Flibiac brothers laugh and decide, okay, let's just kill the little bro, alright? During all the fighting between the bros and the buff and manager bro, the Violator is leaning on his back and mumbling to himself. He briefly discusses his past right here. He claims to be exiled, that the Mafia, his devil family, plotted his murder. He wants to discuss it with someone, but who? He's burned every bridge there is. He then begins conversing with the heads still attached to his arm. If I said heads, I meant to say head. <laughs> Anyways, the Violator pretends that Tommy, dead mafia bro, is pretending to be his head while talking to himself. This is just one crazy moment, but who else is he going to talk to? His background is revealed here. He claims that after his father was known as the blood-sucking devil from hell, or Flebaton, spirit of the higher Ares, in modern English, his father was violent and enormous. I mean, the bro was up to 15 feet tall. 
A scientist or doctor named John D. created his father in 1589. Dr. John D. forced a woman, the mother of the violator, to get jiggy with this enormous monster father. Like, yo, man, that's sickening. But of course, she gave birth and then passed away. So the birth of the violator, it was the same with his four brothers. None of their mothers did not survive when they were born. He explains how he never got along with his brothers and his dad always took their side. Eventually, he murdered his father and took up the role of the chief lieutenant of Malboja's army. The violator claims he might be acting on his mother's wish to kill his father, or he may be acting subconsciously with the desire to connect with his mother. He hated his father and siblings because he felt they were mistreated. When he set eyes on his brothers, he wished that he was never born. After some thought, he wished his brothers were never born too. His father shared his disappointment with the violator, so he murdered his father. He claimed that by really killing him, his subconscious desire to murder him was satisfied. Finally, the father claimed that he had broken his heart. Yeah, it's kind of pretty deep and troubling, man, but okay, so going back to the admonisher and the devil siblings are battling in the background, I mean, how badass does one human have to be to give the Fliviac brothers a run for their money? Although one devil succeeds in devouring him, that is the vaporizer that is, the admonisher bursts from his stomach, it's admonishing time, this freaking comic is out of bounds man, but I dig it. The violator goes on to describe the backstory. After killing his father, Malboja, another demon, employs the brothers to serve under his authority. The chief lieutenant was the infringer. He makes a mistake with Spawn. This took place in Spawn issue number two through four that led the violator to be exiled. Like I said, I know I'm promoting those issues here, but this book, this comic, ties into those events too. For context speaking, you gotta check it out. Plus, a brother doesn't mind his watch time too. Like and subscribe if you're liking the content so far. So while he makes his case that he was in the wrong and deserved whatever happened to him, the violator bangs Tommy's head against the ground. He's going crazy having a conversation to himself since he has no one to talk to. It's a crazy but kind of funny moment where the violator shares his tender and deepest moments but rejects himself via Tommy's head. Dead Mafia bro. He comes to his senses and it appears he broke his own arm in the process. He leaves the structure where everyone is and decides to visit a nearby location. Where a new crowd apprehends him, they ask him, what do you want? As this is their territory, he's infringing on their property now. He tells him, hey, I'm here to see your boss. They do just that by humiliating him and picking him up. When he sees Spawn, he asks Spawn to help a brother out with his brothers, and you already know the reaction that Spawn's about to give. Cause you know, Spawn is like, man, you asking me for help after all the bull job you put me through? Bruh, that's where we end issue number two of The Violator. So The Violator, after escaping, runs into some mobs who work for Spawn. They took The Violator to him and he asked Spawn for help. The setting shifts. The Violator is taken by Spawn, who then flees after him to meet with him privately at another location. Spawn claims that the Violator has repeatedly attempted to kill him, that he is becoming obnoxious and that everything occurring in the city is because of him, referencing the dome and all the bull jive that's happening. And he still has the balls, so to speak, to beg him for assistance? Yo, the Violator says his brothers are here to kill him, and the admonisher from the Mafia is trying to kill him too. So Spawn doesn't give a damn, that's your problem, not mine. But the Violator does some verbal gymnastics and tells Spawn that he's doing Spawn a favor. These guys are messing everything up. There's no way you, Spawn, can handle them by yourself. He asks Spawn to use his magic to give him back his powers. So Spawn says to him, if I use my magic to give you your powers back, you would do more stupid stuff. Plus, Spawn will be drained if he uses his magic to give the Violator his powers back. Given their history, it's to be unwise to say the least. So the Violator claims that fighting his four wicked brothers will be even more exhausting. He tries to persuade him by promising to return his energy once the Malboja, his former master, curse is lifted. Moreover, Malboja would be furious if Spawn restored the Violator's powers. So Malboja revoked his powers and held a grudge against Spawn. So Spawn asks if the Violator will fix or restore his power levels if he turns him into a demon again. The Violator is like, yes, and both agree. Even as a reader with what I mentioned before with my brief history of the two, I already know this is not going to be good. So Spawn uses his magic power to give the Violator his powers back. 
The violator transforms and he feels different and has flames on the palms of both hands. He knows it worked and he feels he can switch back and forth to his form. The violator, nasty demon form to take on his brothers. On the other hand, Spawn is weak, exhausted, and on his knees pleading with the violator to remember the promise while the violator is pleased. So, okay, so the violator is like, okay, yeah. Okay, I'll go and restore your powers back and kick spawn out of the building They were both at the top of the building when transforming his powers Did you expect this to play out any different but just saying but at the same time? <laughs> this is kind of funny in this panel here his brothers are engaged in combat with the admonisher So the violator decides to return they are both still involved in the battle with no apparent one Yo, How in the hell this admonisher guy still giving them a run for their money? I'm just saying so the violator, always having a slicky plan, lies down where his brothers left him after thrashing his ass, acting like he hadn't moved. So when one brother, the vandalizer, goes back to check on him, he's still lying there, so obviously the trap was set. The sibling takes him by the neck and discusses how he should be killed. So his own head thinking about all the different ways to kill the violator is distracting him and that's okay, it works to the violator's favor. So the violator changes into a real demon, adopting a new appearance resembling that of his devil brethren and slashes the hand of the brother who was holding him by the neck, taunts him, mocks him, then the violator throws the hands aside. The brothers are ready to fight and exchange words before getting into it. Now, before going any further, if you're liking the content, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out RatedComics.com for some really cool comics and limited print comic exclusives to add to your comic book collection. Now we go back into the content. So the Vandalizer is quickly defeated by the Violator, who then pulls off his head. To vent his rage, the Violator repeatedly bangs his skull, as gory as it is. <laughs> Yo man, it's dark humor that just works in my opinion, man. Vandalizer has had enough and says the word, uncle. Tony Twist and Albert appear to check on Amonisher's progress. As the Violator sees the Mafia boss and one of his men watching them fight, the Violator spots him and he chases him. The Mafia boss and his man enter a store and lock the doors to protect themselves. The Violator breaks into the store because they're just after the Mafia chief. By switching the outfits with the Mafia man, the head of the Mafia tricks the Violator into thinking that he is the man, Tony Twist, and then escapes. Like, you ain't taking my life. Tony Twist made the switcheroo and Violator can't tell the difference because Tony Twist is the Mafia brother that the Violator wanted dead from the events of Spawn issue number 2 where Violator ripped hearts out of his men. As to why he did that, there's more to it than what we're going to go into but you can find all that out in Spawn Beginnings. Of course, a brother would like you to watch. I'm just saying, even if you watched it before, i like you to watch it again. The Amanisher Rambo Arnold Schwarzenegger man is lost while the Demon Brothers summon a hell game to escape. They first search the area for their brother, Vandalizer, who the Violator had killed. They find his body destroyed and conclude that their brother has defeated him. They figured it was a lucky punch because they're still under the impression that he can't transform. So yeah, the trick's on them. So they witness the Violator leaving the store in human clown form. The Violator escapes the Demon Brothers grasp and enters the Hell Gate they summoned. This is pretty wild and crazy entertaining. So after snatching the dead brother's body, the Devil Flibiac brothers enter. The Admonisher approaches from behind and assaults them after the Hell Gate vanishes. Everyone is caught off guard by the surprise attack and chaos results. This is so 90s where he says, leave him without me, eh? I strongly admonish you to reconsider surprise the Fliviac brothers vindicator vandalizer vaporizer who's beaten and vacillator swiftly reassemble and prepare to fight the admonisher the admonisher enters the conflict as it is still in progress no fear no pain no gain the brothers became more resolute in their fight due to his presence the mob boss twistelli is revealed to be the real villain as the struggle climaxes the violator used alberto thinking he was tony twist as bait disguised as the violator he knew his brothers wouldn't be able to tell one human apart from another ironically neither couldn't the violator be earlier but it's a pretty good twist for the plot twist maybe that pun didn't work but hey i had to give it a shot everyone is shocked by the discovery and the devil's brethren feel betrayed by twistelli despite this they keep fighting with all their strength determined to hold the violator accountable hellgate is permanently shut 
we get this monologue that out from the chambers up towards the stars, he hears a million heartbeats from the buildings far below. He cannot prevent a flood of luminous saliva gushing from between his fangs. The planet and his sleeping hearts are spread before him tonight, and the enemies of mankind that there be, by far the worst has come to root. While brethren of the Flibia brothers, the Violator can now rest easy knowing that justice has been done. Twistelli's betrayal will never be forgotten. And that is the end of the Violator issues number one through three, full story. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. I thought this was wildly entertaining, gory, and fun to read, and I hope you had fun reading it too. Links in description if you wish to add this comic book and or some of our other rated comics exclusives to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Lastly, this review is sponsored by coffee, so if you'd like to buy a boy a cup of coffee, link in description or donate to the Super Thanks. But the greatest compliment you guys can do is by liking this video and subscribing to Rated Comics YouTube channel. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.